Boom, we are live. And I'm going to tell you this. We have, is everybody listening? The Car Mom. And if you don't know who the Car Mom is, you're going to know here really, really soon. And if you're a female and you're listening to this, you're going to want to listen to what the Car Mom has to say because she's going to give insider information. And she's going to help women feel more empowered to go into that dealer and get the car that they want. Are you guys ready for this? Yes. Before we get going, though, I wanted to give a big shout out to Techie Tony. He makes all this beautiful stuff happen, this magic. And I am so pumped up. We are going to be back in two seconds. Here we go, guys. Have you ever felt like you were taken for a ride when buying, selling, or repairing your car? Well, not anymore. I'm Jay. And I'm Dave. And this is the podcast that tells you what to watch out for, whether you're buying, selling, or repairing your car. With 47 years of automotive experience, we are the Automotive Authorities. This podcast is sponsored by iAutoAgent. We're real estate agents for cars. And Quality Auto STL. Trusted services with no surprises. That was pretty spiffy. Oh, my gosh. I'm going to tell you, I am really, really excited because the car mom and I connected probably about five or six months ago. And I got to admit, she was actually working at a dealer because her family owns a dealer. And I actually was looking to hire her. But when you hear her story, it is absolutely amazing. Because what the car mom did is she came out of her comfort zone and she is making things happen for the females and the empowerment. And the one thing that everybody hates to do is go buy a car and the car mom makes it happen for the females where they can feel empowered. Um, Kelly, why don't you tell us just a little bit about yourself and tell us why did you start that? Why did you start your business? Sure. So my name is Kelly Stumpy and I live in St. Louis. My family owns six car dealerships in the St. Louis area. When I graduated college in 2016, I went right into the business of selling cars and it was so fun. Absolutely loved it. Really enjoyed meeting people, selling the cars. It was just a blast. Um, As I transitioned to getting married and to motherhood, the hours of the car business just became a little bit too much. Uh, so I transitioned out of selling and worked on like some back end stuff, still helping my family out. But really, I really missed like the connections that I was making with my customers. So I decided like in the midst of the pandemic, I was kind of like a little nervous, a little sad, miss selling cars, miss the customers. And my husband just gave me the idea. He's like, why don't you just try to sell cars to other moms? Like, you know, you have to, you, you can't work evenings anymore. You can't work Saturdays. Moms are out and about. Just trying to sell cars to moms. And I kind of took that idea and ran with it. And then I started an Instagram account called The Car Mom. And I started reviewing cars for moms and for families. Just giving moms like a first look on how does the car seat work in that car? Can your stroller fit? Do you have enough cup holders? Um, And as I started reviewing the cars, I noticed that there were so many women so intimidated by the car buying process. I was totally sympathetic because... It sucks to buy a car as a woman. It also sucks to sell cars as a woman. And we deal with the, we deal with very similar things, just, you know, the tables are turned, obviously. So I was very sympathetic. But I also knew that there are a lot of good people in the car business. I mean, my family, I know a ton of sales, so probably over 100 salespeople. And a lot of them are really good people. So um, I like to bring, one of my favorite things with my audience is car buying tips, how to not get taken advantage of, how to feel confident and empowered in your car buying process, and just kind of break down that fourth wall between dealerships and the customers. Well, that is awesome. And I love to hear that. I'm kind of like the male version of you, and I felt the same way when I was in the in the dealership world. Truly, I did. I, I felt like I was like this caged animal, and I have all this stuff to say. And I couldn't say it to anybody because I was restricted on what I could say. Yeah. And now you have got this platform that you have over 130,000 followers and you're just helping people, Kelly. Mm -hmm. And it's amazing. 
I, I just I just think that's incredible. Uh, so tell me this: what would be like your number one piece of advice? When somebody, let's just say it, 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 you're, you're, you're a lady, you're looking to go buy a car, what's the number one piece of advice that they can do to give themselves that confidence to walk into that dealer? So my number one piece of advice for confidence, for improving your car buying experience, for not getting taken advantage of, basically 99% of the things people complain about can be solved by doing your research on the dealership, obviously, but also on the salesperson. So I like to share a platform called Dealerator a lot because um, you can actually read reviews on individual salespeople. You can also just go to Google reviews and mm -hmm. notice a salesperson's name that maybe gets mentioned over and over again. And then, so you read reviews. Maybe you want to give your business to another woman, to someone who has five-star reviews, someone who's been there for 15 years. You read reviews and you schedule an appointment with that salesperson. When you roll up to a car dealership lot on a busy Saturday morning, you're not going to get the good salesperson because they work by appointment only. They're busy. You're going to get who's ever outside smoking a cigarette. And that's not who you want to work with. Uh -uh. And then, then you pull up to a dealership. Then the salespeople get to choose you. Then they get to be like, oh, yeah, look at that old minivan. They definitely need a new car. Oh, yeah, I, can, I bet they have credit issues. Or you're going to let them prejudge you. And that's not, that's not, that does not put you in control. So my biggest piece of advice is to choose your salesperson. You choose a good salesperson with good reviews who knows their product, your car buying experience is 10 times better, guaranteed. Boy, wow. wow. Yeah. What a piece Woo. of advice. Wow. And let me, let me tell you this. When I was in the dealership world and I would sit down with a client, I had this saying, salespeople are like a box of chocolates. You don't know which one you're gonna get. Love that. Oh. But you you don't. So don't roll the dice. And you guys know, I mean, you've been in the dealer world. Who's outside waiting for the minivans to pull up? Kelly, Lito. Kelly Lito is. Kelly not. I'm not. I'm busy. I got appointments. I got referrals. Guido is available uh, at yeah. all times. Yeah. And Guido's brother's the manager. Yeah. Is that Bobby? And Bobby. And Bobby doesn't know. Bobby doesn't know. And um, and Bobby needs to to yeah, man. Is that yeah. Bobby? Was Bobby the one smoking the cigarette? No, Guido is. Oh, Guido, Guido is. is okay. You know what? That is such amazing advice. I, I mean, here I never even really thought about that. No, though. you can pick and choose now who you want to talk to. Yeah. It's just like even, anything. I even encourage people, you know, you can even go a step further. So, like, you know, you go on Dealer Rater, you go on Google Reviews, you reach out to that salesperson. Give them a phone call. See if you have. See if you like them. Put them through a little bit of like. Make sure you guys have a good rapport. Call them and be like, "Hey, I'm interested in the sport expedition." And then I also say, "Give them a little task. Hey, could you go ahead and send me a picture of it? Or can you go ahead and send me the Carfax report? Or can you go ahead and do and let's see what kind of response time they get? Because if they're not going to respond to you asking for a picture of the car, they're definitely not going to respond to you when it breaks down or when I've, you need something." I've oh, never heard. I've, awesome. I've never heard that. Is great info. Thank I've you. never heard this before. Have you, Dave? No. Well, I mean, I'm not in that space to go buy a new car from a dealership. So this isn't stuff that I would think of. But, you know, it just it makes a lot of it makes so much sense. Well, I think it also comes down to this. How important are reviews? Yeah. Right. Oh, and so golden in my world, same as you, yeah. Jay, they're golden. Absolutely. Like I preach all day long that, you know, we have an I auto agent. We have a 4.9 Google review with 166 reviews. I watch that stuff like clockwork. Yeah. And granted, you're not going to make everybody happy. That's not going to happen. But boy, I love that. And I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to share that with my clients Ooh. and stuff. Obviously, if they don't hire me to go buy a car and they want to go do it themselves, I'm going to say, "Hey, listen. Pop on. Figure out who you want to work with, not and then you're in control." And speaking of control, what's another thing that that women can do once they find the salesperson that they like what is the next step they should take kelly as far as you know going to get that car so i think it obviously depends on where you're at in the car buying process so i'm a huge fan a huge believer in test drives and i think test drives for families are a little bit more complicated because it's not how to drive around the block it's how do i get my children in and out of the car how do i install their huge car seat safely. Can I install something in third row? How do I buckle the kid that's now in the third row? Can I access the third row with a car seat in the second row? I mean, there's so much to think about. Um, so a test drive is so important, but it's more than just a, 
it's more than just a drive. It's like you need to bring your car seats to the dealership. I think that a lot of people, people ask me all the time, like, is that weird? Can I do that? And I'm like, when I was selling cars, people would bring the weirdest thing to see if it could fit in the car. I mean, things like that. I'm not even going to mention on this podcast. I want to hear though. I would like to hear one of them. I would not be comfortable saying, but it could, <laughs> I was like, let's say I saw a massage table and then I saw some other things. And I was like, I don't know. Uh, okay. We're getting, yeah, I'm not even kidding. And then golf clubs and fishing poles, but I will never forget this one contraption. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. So I'm like, your car seat is not the problem. But I do think yeah. it's to make you to make you feel more comfortable. And you know, if you're installing your car seats in your car, that takes a while. I mean, I'm a certified pa child passenger safety tech. It still takes me about 15 minutes to install a car seat properly. 10, 15 minutes. So you don't want to have that salesperson hovering over you and telling that and also salespeople don't know anything about car seats. Nothing. So then being like, oh, yeah, it looks like it fits. Or, oh, yeah, I know someone else who has this. That's, yeah. not, that's not what you want. So I think setting that expectation with the salesperson you chose, who's a great salesperson because you did your research, so you won't have an issue, um, and saying, hey, I'm going to come and test drive. I need to make sure my car seats fit. I need to make sure I can get my family in and out of it safely. So, And just really like setting that expectation, um, I think will will definitely help you feel more comfortable and allow you to take your time with the car and make sure it's the best, the best decision. I think that's a great piece of uh, advice. Really you got people put the car seats in and drive it to soccer practice. How drive does that it to soccer practice and pr target parking lot, Starbucks drive through wherever you're going. People yes, are they get that full experience. Yeah. hundred percent. What, what's the length of time you think somebody should drive a car? I'm interested to hear this. Um, I mean, <laughs> to me, real to me, really, I feel like driving a car is like trying on a wedding dress when you know, you know, like it just fits. Like you walk out and you're like, this is the one you get on the highway. And you're like, this is the one. But I think where it gets more complicated is the, you know, fitting your family in it. Yeah, no, it, that is true. And what would you say? Like, you know, I have my opinions on this. What, once let, let's just say, okay, they, they, they found the car online. They found, um, somebody not related to Guido as their salesperson or Bobby or Bob. Well, Bobby is Bobby's Bobby's just cool. a, he's just a silly, he's somebody, he's a, he's a misinformed customer. That's okay. Bobby. But Guido is somebody we don't want to work with and we don't want to work with Guido's brother. So oh. what, what, so when the, when you get to the dealer, should, should they schedule an appointment or should they just show up? Oh, a hundred percent schedule an appointment. Absolutely. 100%. And, and I also say, you know, get a sitter for the day too. I mean, there's no, car dealerships suck. Uh, I cannot imagine doing it with a two-year-old. And it's, I think a huge miss, people get really frustrated with the car buying process because they say it takes a long time. And it does take a long time, but I, to, I tell people it takes 30 days to close on a house. Like it's going to take four hours to buy an $80,000 Ford Expedition. Like let's just take a deep breath, get a sitter for the day, get a Starbucks, get there early. And just don't go on a Saturday. Don't, don't go, go Saturday on a two o'clock. Don't do it. I mean, I I had somebody the other day. Uh, they they hired they hired me to uh, in my company to help them buy a vehicle. And they're like, "Yeah, we we can. We're going to go in there on Saturday." I'm like, "Can you just go a different day, or do you just want to have a bad experience?" Oh, we can go on a different day, but then don't go on a Saturday. It's it's absolutely crazy. Yeah. What do you think about this too, Kelly? And this is something that I try to teach my clients. Once they've driven the car, let's just say that they, so obviously they're going to, in my opinion, I think the female is going to make the decision 99% of the time. But what's the easiest way if there is a spouse involved and they want to go would it be easier to bring the spouse there? Would it, could, do you think they should drive it to them? Like, no, I think you should. I think you should bring your husband if you want to bring your husband or your significant other. Okay, I would, I would bring him. I really try to not. And I'm not saying that you were saying like that was a game, but like I don't want to do. We're going to pick a good salesperson, so like I'm not worried about them only talking to your husband because they're not going to do that because they're a good salesperson. So yeah. I would show up. Save yourself time. I mean, I would hate, I don't want to drive all the way to show my husband the car. Like he's here. Let's like, let me just bring him. Yeah. So the, 
my whole my whole point was is that let's say your the spouse the the wife or the husband they want to they want to show it to each other but one of them is working oh yeah what's the easiest way to get around that you think um i would just say prepping your salesperson okay i have i have a template email on my website where i like it, it's basically a template to ask for an extended test drive um it's, I mean, a dealer, the dealership might say no, and certain insurance policies may not allow for overnight test drives, but you can always ask. You know, yeah. my advice there would be, you know, make sure you don't get into price. Like, make sure you, let's make sure you like the car first. Like, don't sit there and negotiate for four hours and then be like, well, I got to take it to my husband. Like, take it to your husband first. And then if you like it, then let's negotiate price. Because why are you going to sit there and fight for four hours if it doesn't even fit in your garage? I totally agree. And I think that that sometimes people do cost themselves more time when they do go to a car dealer when they when they are not set on the car that they want and they're it's just it's just a waste of time for everybody yeah so i think i think setting expectations with the dealer is is really really important let's talk about a little bit about leasing and i and i want to hear what your opinion is because i've always been a huge fan of leasing and especially since families like i'll give you a perfect example and you're going to laugh at this but Back in 1998, I bought a Pontiac Transport minivan. My daughter was going to be born. Okay, well, that was what I was going to have you laugh at. We had a fire department install the car seat. It was one of those bench seats, so you can't even get in the back seat. And I was afraid to take the whole thing out of it. And so the whole point of it is I thought I needed a minivan before I had a kid. And I did. I had a minivan. We, my friends made fun of me. You're driving around a minivan. You don't even have a kid yet. But what we noticed was our needs were starting to change as like, so the kids started getting older and, uh, and believe it or not, they didn't have rear air. I know I'm getting my, I'm, I'm aging myself being in the business since 1996. But my whole point is, is that things change in a family. So what would your, I mean, what do you think about leasing? So I am a very, one of the biggest things I preach to my following is to forecast your family growth. So I, um, mm -hmm. I sell a car buying workbook and basically what it does is it just like helps you, helps you sift through the different cars. And in the workbook, there's a car seat, there's a car seat map. Um, and I think that what, what I see happen a lot is one, these new cars are so dang expensive. They're so expensive. They're $50,000. So to make a $50,000 car affordable, you have to extend your financing terms 72, 84 months. Okay. So first of all, a $500 payment on a brand new car, that's easy to stomach. It's a brand new car. That same $500 payment on month 64 is a lot less fun to stomach because now it's got 150,000 miles on it. Now your kids have destroyed it. Now it is having issues and you're still paying $550 on it. So, and then what I also noticed, so that's one option. With, I hate that, hate that. The other option is your your family grew. You didn't realize that, and manufacturers do this all the time. Kia Telluride is a perfect example. It's an eight passenger car. It is not eight passengers at one time, for the record. It has eight seat belts. It is not an eight passenger car. So you buy, you have one kid. You you are like, well, I have to finance it for seven years, but I'm going to keep it for forever. Okay, how many kids are you having in seven years? Okay, you're having three. Okay, well, you can't fit three car seats in a Kia Telluride. So now what are we doing? Okay, so now we need to get a new car. All right, well, let's go to the car dealership at year four of your seven-year loan. Oh, what's that? You're upside down. Shocker. So that, like, growing families should lease if they can, because you just never know, especially if you're in the new car market. Don't, especially if you're in the new car market. Leasing is such a better option because these kids grow so much. I have two kids. I've grown out of this bypass. I'm in an Atlas Cross Sport right now, grown out of it. Need a third row. So bad. I only have two kids. Um, so I think leasing just offers you that flexibility of one, you get the newest car with the best with the best safety features, the best crash prevention features. It's the more most reliable. It's under warranty. It's a lower payment. I don't really have a lot of cons to leasing. All taxes included. Taxes included. I don't really have a con to leasing. Um, nope. When you're in the new car market, and I just see all the time. You know, everyone says, I'm going to drive into the ground. No, you're not. No, you're not. I've seen thousands of car deals happen. And it's fun. Let's just be a little more honest with ourselves. You're not, you're going to finance it for 72 months. You're going to, 
So what? Yeah. And then, you know, there's the ownership aspect of it all. And it's like, well, I want to own something. I'm like, well, three years in to a 72 month loan, you don't own anything. You probably own more if you lease it. You're exactly right. And what Sorry, I'm very don't... passionate about that. I can't really tell though, Kelly. I think that you need to like, <laughs> you're a little bit, you're a little passive. I know. And I think that you're a little quieter than we thought. <laughs> no, I'll tell you this though. Um, so, so true. I'm a hundred percent on board with that. People think they're going to drive it in the ground. They're like, oh, I want to own something. Well, guess what? What they happened? You're driving in the ground right here. Yeah. Right. And then you get to go see Dave. And Dave, <laughs> like, what's, what's, what's the, what's your favorite uh, word or your uh, favorite saying? The parts cannon. Dave, share what the parts cannon is. Oh, the parts cannon. No, that, that, the, what the parts cannon is, is we don't know what's wrong with it. So we just get a, a big cannon out and shoot parts at it. Until right. it's fixed. And what happens when you're out of warranty? That's Now expensive. you have a payment. Yeah. It's not, okay, so. My whole point of this is to, and I, I love that, Kelly. I love it. I love it. Because guess what? When you're on a six-year loan at four years, whose name's on the title? Not yours. The banks. Whose name's on the title after three years? And, and you're not out of equity. Nobody. Out of your hair. Yeah. You don't have to pay for it. And then you can also get out of leases early. And mm -hmm. I, know I've, I know I've hit on that before, but I'm really glad you hit on that because I think if you're a younger family and I love the, what was the word you use that you have to plan or forecast. You're, forecast. 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 Yeah. just like if you're in business, you have to forecast what's going to happen. Well, honey, do you want to have one kid, two kids, three kids? Oh, I think I want to have three kids. Well, don't go buy a Telluride. Yeah. And one thing I do like, because some people want to purchase and if we're in the used car market, obviously purchase. But I, I encourage my families to, when I say forecast your family growth, okay, if you're going to finance that car for six years, I'm literally in my workbook, I have a map. You're going to write where every single person sits for all six years. And you're going to, so then, so I've got George right now, my son George, he'll be two, oh my gosh, Thursday. He's Aww. rear facing. Okay, so when, so George might go forward in a forward facing car seat, let's say around year four of me owning the car. So then where does he sit? So then where does kid three sit? And where does Hattie sit? So literally for every year you own the car, you write, you literally show me a little picture of where everyone's going to sit. And then you try the car seats out in every single one of those positions. Even if that's not where George is right now, he's not in that kind of car seat. He doesn't need to be in the third row because I only have two kids. I'm trying that out before I buy the car. Wow. I'm going to yep. ask you a question. I'm going to, because one of, one of the things that people don't realize with our podcast it is raw and it's uncut. We do not edit this. You're not nervous and, about that. <laughs> and nothing and nothing, nothing is planned. I'm going to ask you right now, Kelly, what's the best bang for your buck? I'm a family of two kids and I want an SUV. What's the gut reaction and why? I mean, two kids is so hard because you can buy any car if it's two car seats. So you could buy anything. Three, yeah. three kids. Three kids gets more complicated, right? All right, let's make it complicated. Yeah, let's make it I like complicated. My wife says I'm very complicated. And then three kids. So the minivans are the most affordable. <laughs> I agree. The minivans are much more affordable. Um, what if I don't want to be a minivan mom? Well, you should never say never, but um, I actually, <laughs> you should always test drive a minivan. But I think that the best, the best large SUV, the best large SUV, hands down, is the Ford Expedition. It blows the Yukon. The suburban, all that out of the window. For I'll give you my. Right. Go I'll give you my the Ford Expedition is better because it has lower anchors in the third row, which means it has better car seat hardware. The Yukon and the suburban don't have lower anchors in the third row. Oh. The Ford Expedition has what's called a car seat friendly tilt. So when you have a car seat installed with the lower anchors, you can tilt the seat and access the third row. Yukon and suburban don't have that. Wow. Uh, it also has head restraints in the middle seat. The Yukon and Expedit, the Yukon and Suburban don't have that. If you're sitting in a, if you're sitting in a seat without a head restraint, that is the most dangerous seat in the car. You don't have a head restraint. You will be seriously injured or worse in the event of a collision. Ford Is Expedition. For yep. Ford Expedition, 100% the best option for large wow. SUVs, 100%. We just did a buyer's agent, and actually, Kelly, you had sent one of your really good clients. Uh, to us, and we got her into a yeah. That's because they wouldn't dare by the no. The other one's fine. The other one's fine, but for a for three car seats, Expedition hands down. And then she was oh. very particular too on the way that the seating configuration was on it bench. too. 
We like bench seats in the Carmon crew. And it, and that's exactly what we did is we got her exactly. It, it's just amazing. It's amazing what, what you're doing, Kelly. Um, and you know, somebody like Kelly that has been doing this for five years in the car industry, her family owns dealerships to step out of her comfort zone because you have a purpose. Mm-hmm. You really do. And I just commend you for that. And yeah. I know how hard it is. I, I really do. When you when you step out of that comfort zone, I, I have this saying that when you feel comfortable, there's a problem. But when you feel uncomfortable, that's when you grow. And you have to get uncomfortable sometimes. And if you have enough drive and vision, and that's what Kelly has, it's it's incredible. It is absolutely incredible. Kelly, do you have anything else you want to add? Oh, um, you know, I just think people ask me all the time. I guess one thing I would add is I have two things I guess I would add. Um, if you experience, I get a lot of people who are saying, this is what the salesperson did. Like, what would you do? Or how can I get the salesperson to take me more seriously? And really like my blanket answer is unfortunately like we just, don't like it is 2021. I'm just, I'm not going to tell you how to, I'm not going to teach some man or woman how to treat you with respect. Just not going to do that anymore. There's so many good salespeople out there who want to earn your business. So if you feel mistreated at a dealership, if you feel like they're not giving you the time of day, if they're only looking at your husband, if they're telling you that you can't handle a car that big, then you write them a review and you don't buy a car from them. We're, I don't want to buy a car from that kind of person. I applaud well, I mean, people, that. people want me like, what can I say? It's like, we're saying nothing. It's 2021. <laughs> if they haven't learned it by now, they's never going to learn no. it. Um, so that's my I, big thing. And then my other point is, you know, people want to know how to get a good deal on a car. And my, you know, I think women, ex- I mean, especially me, my following, we don't really like to, I don't want to be uncomfortable. I don't want to negotiate. I don't want to do this whole dance. So I just say that my biggest tip is, you know, you can use a buyer's agent, obviously like I auto agent, um, and take, and take some of that pressure off of you. But really it just comes down to like validation is the new negotiation. So if you want to go, dealerships are not, we're not dumb. We spend thousands of dollars every month to make sure our cars are priced appropriately. We know you didn't come in on our Chevy Equinox because it was $2,000 over priced. So if you want to make a lower offer on a car, you have to be able to validate it because there's nothing worse or more even embarrassing when you say, well, we take $2,000 off and then the dealership comes out and say no, because here's why, here's why, here's why. And they, you know, the manager prints out three pieces of paper for them to show you why right. it's the way it is. Right. So if you want to make an offer, validate the offer and you'll have the confidence, you'll have the confidence in the offer you're making. And the other thing is too, I think depending on the times, like right now, when I'm doing, when, when I auto agent and we're doing our buyer's agent program and we're going out <laughs> and we're talking to dealers, there really is no more negotiation on used cars, folks. I mean, there just isn't. So if you look online and you see a good price and you know it's a good price, then buy the car. Yeah. There's no point of, you know, you don't have to squeeze everything, like, because dealers are not going to let you do that. Now, on new cars, it's a little different because there's different incentives. There's different things that the manufacturers paying the dealers. So that is a little bit different of a story. But you're looking at a used car, just like you said. They've got this thing down to a science. They can say, okay, yeah. I'm the number one in 50 states. We spend the money. And people, and I like I like that. I think it's making for a better – the car buy – the car, right. it's, it's, um, it's more transparent than it's ever been. So right. – there are certain there, you know, there are certain dealerships that do it the right way. And there's certain dealerships that don't do it the right way. We don't have to name any names, but I think this is just incredible. Um, for, for all of you that are listening today, if you'd like to get in touch with the car mom, I want you to go to the car mom official.com. That's the car mom official.com. Get in touch with Kelly. Ask her questions. She's an amazing person. She Thank wants you. to help you. And, you know, Dave, I learned a lot today. I know we're running out of time, but, you know, what a great – Kelly. Wow. You know, That's we all just, I got to say is wow. Yeah. I yeah. brought up some stuff that I would have never thought about. And I've Absolutely. been in 20-something years now. Well, I think that 
you really have an advocate out there if you're a female and you just don't feel like you're treated fairly and you don't feel empowered, go to see Kelly and, and she'll she'll help you through some of those tougher things. And, you know, we're all here to help you, whether it be iAutoAgent.com, Quality Auto STL. That's why we do this and we spend our time doing this. We aren't getting rich from this, I'll assure you that. <laughs> um, but what I want to do next, Dave, is I want to talk about, we talked a little bit about used cars. I want to talk about how to get the top dollar for your trade at the next episode. I mean, I, I have gotten people coming up left and right. Kelly, I know you're asked that question a million times. Mm -hmm. I get asked it too. People know, like, Dave, I'm trading my car and I want to do all this stuff before I do it. So I'm in that space too. Yeah. I, I, that's what we're going to hit. We're going to give, I, I mean, I have so many different things. Kelly, would you come back on our show at a later time? I would love to. Anytime. Yeah. You guys and, are awesome. I'm a huge fan of the podcast. I learn a lot. <laughs> Well, thank you. I appreciate it. And Techie Tony, I want to give a shout out. He has been amazing. He produces this beautiful thing, makes it happen every single week. And I appreciate everybody. Please like and subscribe and share this podcast with everybody that you know. <laughs> we're here to help and we're doing some awesome things. I want to thank you very much, Kelly, the car mom. And uh, we will see you on the next episode. Bye, everybody. Nice to meet you, Kelly. Bye.